My fellow citizens of the United States, it is March 31st, 1870, and something occurred yesterday in our government and in our history that is of such import that I felt compelled to bring to you the message of what has happened. The 15th Amendment to the Constitution has been ratified and approved and is now officially a part of our American Constitution. Nothing that we have done since the beginning of our country has such import and is fraught with such possibility for all the citizens of our country. I want to relate to you in part the statement that was issued by Secretary of State Hamilton Fish and I will read my statement, the special statement that I sent to both houses of Congress, which is an unusual move. But the passage of the 15th Amendment is an unusual act. Hamilton Fish, Secretary of State of the United States. Know ye that the Congress of the United States on or about the 27th day of February in the year 1869, passed a resolution in the words and figures following to wit, a pro resolution proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States. And that proposal was Article 15, Section 1. The right of citizens of the United States to vote shall not be denied or abridged by the United States or states, any state, on account of race, color, or previous condition of servitude. Section 2 being, the Congress shall have power to enforce this article by appropriate legislation. And further, that it appears from official documents on file in this department that the amendment to the Constitution of the United States proposed as aforesaid has been ratified by the legislature of some 29 states, and further, that the states whose legislatures have so ratified the said proposed amendment constitute three-fourths of the whole number of states in the United States. Now, therefore, be it known that I, Hamilton Fish, Secretary of State of the United States, do hereby certify that the amendment aforesaid has become valid to all intents and purposes as part of the Constitution of the United States. I sent a special message to both houses of Congress, House of Representatives and the Senate, because of the importance of the passage of the 15th Amendment. And I said to the Senate and House of Representatives, it is unusual to notify the two houses of Congress by message of the promulgation by proclamation of the Secretary of State of the ratification of a constitutional amendment. In view, however, of the vast importance of the 15th Amendment to the Constitution, this day declared a part of that revered instrument, I deem a departure from the usual custom justifiable. A measure which makes at once four million people voters who were heretofore declared by the highest tribunal in the land not citizens of the United States, nor eligible to become so, with the assertion that, quote, at the time of the Declaration of Independence, the opinion was fixed and universal in the civilized portion of the white race, regarded as an axiom in morals as well as in politics that black man had no rights which the white man was bound to respect, end quote, is indeed a measure of grander importance than any other one act 
of the kind from the foundation of our free government to the present day. Institutions like ours, in which all power is derived directly from the people, must depend mainly upon their intelligence, patriotism, and industry. I call the attention, therefore, of the newly enfranchised race to the importance of their striving in every honorable manner to make themselves worthy of their new privilege. To the race more favored heretofore by our laws, I would say, withhold no legal privilege of advancement to the new citizen. The framers of our Constitution firmly believed that a Republican government could not endure without intelligence and education generally diffused among the people. The father of his country, in his farewell address, uses this language. Promote, then, as an object of primary importance, institution for the general diffusion of knowledge. In proportion, as the structure of a government gives force to public opinion, it is essential that public opinion should be enlightened. In his first annual message to Congress, the same views are forcibly presented and are again urged in his eighth message. I repeat that the adoption of the 15th Amendment to the Constitution completes the greatest civil change and constitutes the most important event that has occurred since the nation came into life. The change will be beneficial in proportion to the heed that is given to the urgent recommendations of Washington. If these recommendations were important then with a population of but a few millions, how much more important now with a population of 40 millions and increasing in a rapid ratio. I would therefore call upon Congress to take all the means within their constitutional powers to promote and encourage popular education throughout the country and upon the people everywhere to see to it that all who possess and exercise political rights shall have the opportunity to acquire the knowledge which will make their share in the government a blessing and not a danger. By such means only can the benefits contemplated by this amendment to the Constitution be secured. Ulysses S. Grant I cannot overemphasize the importance of the passage of the 15th Amendment and giving the right to vote to the newly enfranchised black men of this country. I thank you.